Hey kids, this is Ivan, how you doing? Isn't that sad? There's, there's no bass guitar on that hanger on the wall right there. It's like a smile and missing a tooth. It's okay, the bass is in a, a case right over there. You can't see it, but I'm gonna take it to a rehearsal later on tonight. But this video is not about that. In the last video I did, I was talking about dice pool systems, in particular roll and total versus roll and sort, and the effects of those systems or some of the things that happens with those systems. And I made the comment about regression towards the mean. And I use it in terms of looking at something like roll and total, where like if you roll a bunch of dice, well, the outlying results are going to be very, very unlikely. The On a 66, the, the 6s and the 36s, the 7s and the 35s, they're very, very unlikely. Uh, whereas if you roll 6d2, ubiquity dice, getting zero successes or six successes is not terribly likely, but it's a lot more likely than getting these outliers on a large you know, roll and total dice pool. And that's because there's a regression towards the mean. Uh, there's a regression towards the mean in the other one as well. But anyhow, let, let's, stick to this, let's stick to the topic, Ivan. There's a regression towards the mean. You roll a bunch of D6s, you know, yeah, I got a six on this one or I got a one on that one. They tend to cancel each other out. And if you roll six D6, the average result is going to be a 21. It's going to be very strongly skewed towards that. And you'll get that number or numbers really, really close to it. Because the more you do something, the more you roll those dice, or the more dice you roll, well, it's going to average out. Same thing happens when it's not a dice pool and you're not just rolling a bucket full or a fistful of dice, but you're rolling the same die over and over and over again. And this can produce some results uh, in game design that you may not want or weren't aware of, and it can produce results as a player where you're less able to predict the likelihood of a particular event happening. You think you know until you actually do it and, and work out the math and think, oh, this is not exactly you know, how I thought it was going to go. So let's, let's pick something like combat because that's probably one of the you know, most common extended tasks. Now, we could roll one die and do it one time and know what the chances are. My friends and I played a game called Uncharted Worlds. It's a really stripped down PBTA game. Uh, you know, I enjoyed it, I'd like to play that again. But one of the things that we found is we really didn't find combat very satisfying because it was one die roll. We you actually rolled two d6. One die roll. And then based on the results, you, you know, narrate or, or describe, well, what did this entire combat look like? All the discrete actions, everything that happened. It could be this, you know, several minute combat because you already know, like, did you win? Did you fail? Was there some kind of complication? The usual stuff. It didn't seem terribly satisfying. However, if you handle something like combat or another extended task, the traditional way where you're making multiple rolls, well, it can be unsatisfying or things can happen in a different way. So let's take like a standard type combat. Let's not even take D&D, &D, but let's take something that doesn't have any sort of death spiral. So circle of hands is out because the, the abilities of the combatants tend to change over time as they're taking more and more damage. Something like Dark Age of Man, where every combat round, every clash, there's one die rolled, and one opponent is going to win and score damage and the other opponent is going to lose and take damage. And that's gonna happen over and over again until somebody lives or dies, you know. <laughs> so one, one is left standing. So let's take something like uh, two com opponents and we've decided, we, we've determined that at any given role, the, um, the underdog is gonna have a 40% chance of winning that particular round of combat. And let's say that it takes three hits to kill your opponent. So you need three successful clashes before your opponent scores three success hits on you. Well, the person with that 40% chance, they only actually kill their opponent 32% of the time, a little bit less than that. Well, what happened? Well, it started to regress towards the mean. If the numbers are a little bit different, if the, if the uh, cause that's a modest difference in ability, but if you spread those uh, abilities apart and the underdog is even more of an underdog, it, that, uh, that happens at a precipitous rate. So let's say we've got an underdog that's only 25% likely to win each individual clash. They're only going to score three hits on their opponent less than 7% of the time before their opponent does. So it becomes incredibly predictable. And all of a sudden, the, the underdog, which you didn't think was that much of an underdog, well, they lose. And they lose predictably. Um, this can, of course, model uh, verisimilitude. You know, this is probably what would happen. He got one lucky shot in and then the skilled opponent kicked his butt. However, it might not be the effect you want because all of a sudden, depending upon how many rolls it takes to actually finish a combat, how many, how many hits does it actually take, all that kind of good stuff, or to complete any kind of extended task, 
all of a sudden you find the person that's less capable is much less capable than you thought they were. Even if it's just a, a non-contested extended task, but it takes this amount of time, and if you haven't done it in that amount of time, a person that's only going to succeed every you know twenty five percent of the time, and they need to, you know, do something, get three successes within like I don't know four or four or five rounds, they're not going to be that successful. It's going to be it's going to take them like ten times before they actually succeed at something. So this is one of those things to just be aware of in designing a game or when playing a game, when it looks like there's only a slight mismatch between two individuals. That might not be the case. If you're using multiple roles to resolve something, it may be a much bigger difference in capability. And likewise, you know, it might not be the most satisfying thing to do to just have one role, but it's a lot easier to model and predict.